Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com. Today to look at the legendary Toggle Razor. The most complex razor by far Gillette ever produced. It's also the very first adjustable razor they put out. In today's video, we're gonna completely take one apart, tune it up, and reassemble. Let's get started. So the first way I always like to get started is to kind of size up my work. Got a, get a general inspection, kind of a look at what I am gonna be doing. This razor looks to be in pretty good working order um, and really just needs to be taken apart and clean. There is some areas of painting that need to be done and we're gonna dive into that. So our very first step is to remove the toggle uh, lever pin. So this is the kind of linch pin that holds everything together and from here you can, you can do every next step. Uh, we're gonna use a small punch and we're gonna punch this pin out into a little jig we made um, to kind of receive the pin and uh, other components of the toggle. You're gonna to wanna to make sure to punch the flared side out. So one side of the toggle has little tiny kind of grooves and flares and one side is smooth. So you're gonna to wanna to push from the smooth side out so that the groove side uh, comes out of the toggle. Otherwise you can't get this, this pin through. It only is a one directional uh, piece. Uh, this pin needs to be held onto, put in a safe place. As well, there's a small spring and a ball, like a ball bearing more or less, that are inside the toggle. Take those out now so they don't fall out later and get lost. Um, once this main toggle is taken off, you may ask yourself, well, how do we get to the next step? We are now going to use a uh, modified extraction vise that we have and uh, some accessories like a fork that we've put onto it um, to pull the bottom toggle socket away from the handle. This is the next step. That if, you, if you don't do this, you can't do any further steps on this razor. This socket is held in by the uh, press fit that you see towards the bottom of the toggle handle, that area of smooth metal. Um, so we need to basically pull it out of that press fit. And to do that, we're gonna use our extraction vise. You'll notice that our vise uh, has a plastic coating on any metal components so that we don't do any scratching or any tool marks, dents, dings. That's really important for us. We obviously work on customer razors and, and ones that have been replated, refinished. Uh, we wanna make sure we leave no damage on the parts and you can't even tell we've done our work. So the next step is to remove the two compression springs that are now freed up. Uh, they, there's a large spring that's actually pushing the toggle socket out, giving force onto the toggle lever itself. And there's also an inner spring that rides along the T-bar. And this is actually what makes the doors wanna pop open um, and not just kind of sit there and, and not wanna move upwards. So this, this uh, spring is actually residing and resting against a C-clip that is located along the T-bar and we're gonna use a, a small modified screwdriver that we've created just for this job and actually grab that C-clip and, and, and take it off. There's really no clean way of doing this. Uh, it really comes down to just force of just having to pull that C-clip off. It was really never made to be taken off. You know, a lot of guys like to think of these razors like a gun or some kind of other uh, tool that was meant to be taken apart and serviced and these really were not. They were meant to be used and probably thrown away. And so doing some of these steps requires undoing things that weren't necessarily designed to come undone. We're now gonna use our extraction vise to remove the guard and blade tray assembly from the handle. Uh, the guard and blade tray go in very much like the bottom dial or like the red dot. They're put into a colette um, and to take them out, you just need to use some force. We've made sure to put a dowel pin inside of the hollow handle so that as we apply pressure from the clamp holding the handle, we're not gonna crush it in the process. As you get closer to taking this, uh, this top head assembly off, be very careful to not lose the clicker. The clicker is tiny and it is kind of just more or less placed into this handle. And as you're pulling the top part off, you gotta be very careful to not lose that or else you're gonna be without a razor that clicks. Um, put this aside in a safe place again with all of your other small components. And now your entire uh, blade tray and guard assembly should be able to have come safely away from the handle and we can start to see an idea of uh, most of the principal parts of this assembly. The next step is to remove the top colette assembly. This is going to allow us to get to the black ring and repaint it. If you don't need to paint this ring or if you want to do it with masking tape instead, it's probably going to be a lot easier than this step. 
So rather than pull this collet out of the handle, we're gonna push it through. And to do that, we're gonna use a hollow clamp with some wooden uh, jaw jaws that are made just for this handle. Um, and we are going to use a spherical punch and with our arbor press, actually push that collet out of the handle. So this collet assembly is actually two parts. There is a lower actual collet that receives uh, your, your guard and your blade tray, but there's the actual shoulder that sits on the handle. I think that Gillette had this collet be adjustable uh, because they were playing with blade gaps in this time period and maybe didn't know how uh, extreme, you know, close or, or mild this razor really could be. And so this was, uh, this was set up so you could actually adjust it. We've done a measurement of several of these razors and using a feeler gauge, this gap between the bottom part and the top part should measure 0 0.040 inches. Without getting this uh, correct dimension in place, you're gonna end up with a razor that is either too mild of a shaver or too aggressive of a shaver. Well, we're starting to get a better view of the entire assembly, but there is still more. Uh, there is the two black rings that need to be taken off so we can properly paint them. To do so, we're gonna use a single edge blade and kind of slide them down carefully. Truth be told, you should probably clean this first uh, with some kind of maybe CLR or a, a wire brush because usually they are stuck in place uh, from water deposits and from age. So carefully bring these, these brass rings down uh, we have a couple other uh, punches here in the, in the shop that are the same outer diameter. We can slide them right on and get them over to the airbrush station to get painted and baked for hardness. While these parts are baking, it's a good time to perform our tune-up on these razor components. Uh, gold razors cannot be polished, anything that's gold plated. The plating is so thin that the moment it would touch a polishing wheel, it would be right through down to the nickel that's underneath. So instead, we're gonna use a combination of uh, chemical and aqueous cleaning. We're gonna do some light mechanical cleaning. Uh, so we'll start first with our ultrasonic cleaner. This is gonna have a strong detergent in it that's gonna uh, loosen up any kind of uh, soap scum, any kind of shaving cream, any kind of deposits, and get most of them off. We're then gonna go over to our uh, polishing lathe and use a horsehair wheel on a low speed to mechanically clean every part. This is gonna do more of anything big that's visible, things that uh, the ultrasonic left behind, and really kind of just brush clean everything. It won't remove any gold plating, and so it's very safe to do. The last step is to have each part submerged into a, a mild acid solution. In our case, we're using 17% sulfuric acid. Um, you can use vinegar but acid does really well with gold. Uh, there's something about it that it will actually react and brighten up the finish. Uh, even though gold doesn't necessarily tarnish, it does show some age signs on it um, and starts to maybe look a little dull. Um, and so a little bit of acid will actually make everything look a little bit brighter and shinier. So now that everything's looking good and clean, we are going to start the reassembly process. So let's get started. First step is to get the black rings put back onto the brass components, our collet and our socket. To do this, we're gonna just slowly, gradually work them down uh, with the single edge blade. They are very tight fit. This is uh, a slow and steady operation. You don't wanna have the blade slip and have it damage the painting that we just did. So take your time and be careful. Now that we have the rings back in place, uh, we can put the top collette back onto the handle. So to do this, we're gonna use our arbor press, making sure to use a small piece of plastic on the top end of the hammer um, so that it does not damage or mar up the top of the collette. So now we can thread our dial onto the guard. Doing so, we're gonna turn it all the way up to the very top. It should stop around number one or so, and then back it down to the very first nine. Uh, you'll also see that the top of the dial is almost touching the red dot. This is exactly where we're supposed to be. We can now take the compression spring and put it onto the blade tray and feed this down into the guard. This entire assembly, along with the clicker, will now get pressed into place on our handle. Uh, to do this, we have a, a special little piece of plastic that conforms to the blade tray that the assembly is gonna sit on. 
and we are gonna push this razor upside down uh, with the clicker in place. So the clicker goes into this little tiny slot that you'll see along um, the guard component. It needs to stay right there, and we're gonna slowly bring the handle down into place using our arbor press. Now this is kind of a tricky step. You're gonna want the top of the clicker to just be visible above the handle, and we are gonna have to push the clicker in place as we fully complete the compression uh, using the arbor press and pushing these parts back together. You will know if you did a successful uh, reinstallation of the top head if you can now click one through nine and you'll get not only the audible feedback of, of hearing a click, but you'll also see the mechanical adjustment changing uh, one, of course, will have the, the blade uh, tray all the way in its lowest position, almost flat. And at number nine, it'll be at its maximum position with the most amount of blade gap. Be very, very careful when handling these clickers. Uh, we clean them completely by hand with small wire brushes. They are fragile, they are usually spring steel, and they can snap or break, so be very, very careful. Also pay attention to the orientation. The little side with an indentation is what goes into the guard. Uh, assembly and towards the dial to make the clicking sound. Okay, we're getting close. We're almost there. We now need to put the doors back onto the T-bar assembly, feed these down through the guard and the handle, and we are now faced with the challenge of getting our C-clip back onto the uh, T-bar assembly. Uh, this is done uh, first by taking some pliers and getting that C-clip to be back into its original shape and its original diameter and then slowly feeding it down uh, until it falls into the groove where it needs to stop. Without this C-clip being in place, uh, you are not gonna have the compression spring pop the razor open. It's gonna, more or less, the toggle lever will work, but nothing will spring into life to load the blade open and closed. Once this C-clip is successfully uh, resting along the groove, of the T-bar, we can slide our uh, two compression springs into place, the inner one first, and then the larger outer one. We can now take this entire assembly over to our arbor press, and again, using a lot of caution, we want to use the hammer of the press and uh, put it on the outer edge of the toggle socket and press this part into place, knowing so that we need to make sure that the T-bar isn't going to come and, and jab up into the hammer and get damaged in the process. So um, just use the outer edge of the arbor press hammer. So we also want to make sure these springs are clean, even the small one that goes in the toggle lever uh, so that it can function properly. So we're going to clean this spring while it's on our little punch and then get it loaded back into the toggle. We're going to put our ball bearing back in place and make sure it's carefully seated. So now the final step, you're in the clear. You've just got to get this lever back onto the handle. To do so, we always have two people help in the shop because it's a kind of a two person job. One person needs to hold the toggle lever just in the right position, pushing against the force of that little spring and that little tiny ball trying to throw it out of place. And another person to actually feed the pin through the lever. Uh, you want to make sure to put the flared side of the pin uh, at the top and the smooth side going in first. This way, when it's all done, uh, the flared pin and the flared lever both are in the same orientation. Uh, otherwise, the pin won't go fully in and it kind of will look funny. But that is it. You've done it. The toggle is back together. Make sure to test for um, its, its ability to not only rotate and open properly, but also that the one through nine position works. Uh, you see the blade you know, tray going up and down. The blade gap can now be measured on a toggle razor. This is 0.020 inches at setting number one using a feeler gauge. So we're gonna put a blade in and just go right along the, the guard and see that everything's at the proper uh, exposure. If we have a bent blade guard, this is something that should have been corrected while everything was apart. Ideally, using a pair of jeweler's pliers to bend the guard into place. If it's done now, you're gonna have to use a lot more care, a lot more caution uh, with a pair of, of coated pliers so you don't leave any tool marks. Uh, but definitely that step should be done earlier in the process. Everything looks good on this razor. I'm very happy with how the painting came out and general cleanup, and overall it's a beauty. Well, 
By now you have made it all the way through the disassembly, but more importantly, reassembly of the uh, toggle razor. As you can see, there's a lot of specialized tools, specialized know-how that goes into one of these. Um, by, by and large, complex to work on, but very rewarding. I, I kind of uh, like to think of it like a watch, or like a clock, that it's just as well made, very precisely engineered, and it's very satisfying to see the end result working flawlessly like this. If you've done a, a disassembly or a complex razor like this, let us know. I want to hear if you guys have any suggestions or any techniques you guys have tried yourself. Please let us know. Uh, tune in to Razor Emporium YouTube channel for all things vintage shaving. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time here at Razor Emporium.